So today we're going to be making peanut brittle. And for those of you that have this cookbook, Holiday Sweets and Eats, it's actually in this cookbook. It's on page 52, the best peanut brittle. And so it's right there. And we're gonna follow along with this today and we're gonna make this. We're gonna show you how to make the best peanut brittle in Adams County, we'll say that. All right, so um, the first thing we need to talk about is the pan. It's a really good idea if you use a heavy bottom pan. You don't want to use something that's thin because it just works better if you have a heavy bottom pan. So that's what we're using here today. I'm using my hot plate, so I've never done the peanut brittle on the hot plate, but uh, we're going to go for it and I think it'll work fine. So we're just going to go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we need for peanut brittle is sugar. So we're going to go ahead and add our sugar. And we need two cups. Two cups of white sugar. Put just a tad more because that wasn't quite full there. All right. And then the next thing that you can see on the recipe is you need a third cup of water. So we'll go ahead and put our water in. And then we need just a little bit of salt. I already had my pan hot here. Get this going. It takes a little while sometimes for this hot plate to get going. Go ahead and just slide it right there till I add the corn syrup. Then we need three quarter cup of the corn syrup. This is just a white corn syrup. We need three quarters of a cup. And then you just add right that right to your pan too. So we have sugar, salt, the corn syrup, and the water. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a stir here. Now, if you follow your recipe, it's going to tell you that we need to bring this mixture to a boil. So we're gonna go ahead and get that going there. And you don't really have to stir this a lot. I'm just getting this kind of incorporated a little bit. But you just need to bring this to a boil. And then once it comes to a boil, we're gonna add our peanuts to it. And there's a few things that we'll uh, talk about once we add the peanuts here, because we're gonna have to let this cook for about 11 minutes. So then we'll go over uh, some of the tips and stuff. Okay, we're just about to a boil there. So we're gonna add our peanuts. Now, the peanuts that you need for peanut brittle are raw Spanish peanuts. And uh, I'm gonna, we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, what kind, make sure that you don't get for, um, I'm gonna grab another cup here. There are some peanuts that you don't wanna get and that's at the dollar store. And the ones at the, the dollar store are, they have a red dye on them and uh, they'll ruin your brittle. So don't buy your peanuts at the dollar store. So we're gonna add, now the recipe, um, this is our family recipe and it says two cups, but we actually use just a little less than two cups. One and a half cups is what my mom and I put in. Um, we just like a few less peanuts in our brittle. So, now if you like more peanuts, go ahead and add the, the whole two cups. So now we've added the peanuts. And then this is going, we're gonna bring it back up to a boil. And then this has to cook for 11 minutes. Now the recipe, you're gonna see in the recipe here that it says you wanna cook it till it spins a thread and what that means is if when you're cooking it down and you would pull your spoon up like this, it would actually, once the air would hit that, it would be like a thread, like it would not fall off the spoon. That's what that means, to spin a thread. But we've made this so many times, and I'm gonna tell you what the little, the little tip and trick is on that. The way we calculate it is 
and we figured out that it's about 11 minutes. But the really good indicator is see these peanuts here that don't have their jackets on them? They don't have skins. See how white they are? We wanna cook this till these get an amber color. And that is just a good rule of thumb with peanut brittle. You wanna cook those till those white ones start to turn amber. So that's what we're gonna do. And we have figured out that that's about 11 minutes. I don't, I don't time it. You can set your timer for 11 minutes, but it's really the easiest way is just to watch those white ones. And when they start to turn an amber color, then you know that your brittle is done. So that's what we're gonna do there. So this is gonna to have to cook. I'm gonna turn that up a little bit because you're gonna to have to listen to me talk for a little bit. <laughs> and so we'll go over a few more things, but you don't have to stir that. You can just let that do its thing there. Okay, so I wanted to talk a little bit more about the peanuts. The peanuts, um, you want the raw Spanish peanuts, and then you want to make sure you don't get them at the dollar store. Uh, we purchased them at the dollar store once and they had a red dye on them, like the skins. I guess they want them to look, I don't know, more red or healthier, or I don't know why they would put a red dye on them, but they had a red dye and it just turned the brittle red and they didn't uh, cook right. So I would avoid getting your peanuts. Just make sure they're raw Spanish peanuts and if you turn it over on the back side, ingredients, Spanish peanuts, that's it. That's, these are just raw Spanish peanuts. And we get these at our local grocery store chain here called High Bee. High Bee always has these during the holidays. So uh, I just wanted to tell you that about the, the peanuts. Okay, I'm just gonna give this just a little check here. See how our white ones are coming along. And let's go ahead and grab one here. Okay, now they're just barely starting to turn color a little bit. Just a, I can tell they're starting to turn. And this is at a good boil, so we're just gonna keep letting it do its thing there. Like I say, it's usually about 11 minutes. But we'll uh, keep letting it do that. Okay, I'm gonna move a little bit, a little bit of this stuff out of the way because we're gonna butter our pans. And we'll have those ready to go. And then we'll talk a little bit about the brittle we have done here. I made this just a day and a half ago. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. All right, so here's the pans that we're going to use. We're using two jelly roll pans. And we're going to grease them heavily and you want to make sure that you use butter when you uh, butter your pans. Don't use uh, cook spray, non-stick spray, um, margarine. Don't even use margarine. Um, you want to use uh, butter. So we're going to go ahead and heavily butter our pans and get ready here for our brittle. I always just use the paper, the wax paper right from the butter. Always works well to do it like that. I'm just gonna go ahead and get that. Okay, that one's good. I'm gonna go ahead and do this one. Be, you know generous you, wanna, you don't want your brittle to stick because we're gonna have to flip it so we'll give it a good butter grease here that's gonna be good all right All right, let's check our brittle here and see how it's coming along. Okay, it's getting thicker. And our white ones are, are 
turning there. I'm starting to get some color on them. Smells good. All right. Let's just see if that's spinning a thread. I don't think it is. So can you raise that up? Nope. Nope, that's not spinning a thread yet. It's getting close, but it's not there yet. All right, let's talk about the brittle. So I made this just a couple days ago. Now I wanna to talk to you about it. Um, the next ingredient that we're going to add to the brittle is baking soda. We're gonna do that at the end. And this is the reason why. Now, if you notice some brittle that you see looks just like glass, like it's super dense and it just looks like glass. Well, the, our brittle, we put the baking soda in it because then you get, see how we have air pockets in there? There's like spaces, it's almost like flaky. It's like flaky brittle. And that just makes a huge difference in the texture of your brittle, see? See how you got that there? You can see all those little air pockets and it's flaky and that is just makes the best brittle oh there there's a good one right there See there it's got all those layers that's what i always say it kind of has layers to it the brittle but um it's really good we have just a tiny bit um it's really good brittle oh and one one other thing i can tell you um after you get your brittle done when it's to this point if you're not gonna serve it up and eat it like if you made it for a party that's fine go ahead and just put it in your dishes or you know whatever you guys want to serve your brittle in is and you can just set it out but if you're going to store it if you're going to store your brittle like my mom she still makes brittle she used to make it for the craft fair she'd sell she'd sell so much of it she's known here in adams county for her brittle mrs green's brittle and so what you want to do, if you're not going to set it right out, you want to store it in a Ziploc bag. Always keep your brittle in a, in a bag. Or you could put it like in a Rubbermaid container. But you want, to, you want to seal it up. You want to get it. You don't want any air to get to it. If you're not going to serve it right away. So she always just packs hers right up in some Ziploc bags and sells it by the pound at the craft fairs. But um, you want to keep it. Keep it in a container. Okay, see how that's getting nice and it's cooking down. Getting nice and thick. Let's check out our, okay, yeah. Now see there on that, see on that white one there, how it starts, see that? See how it's turning amber? It's getting an amber color, that's what you want. And you can see that this is really starting to thicken down. Let's just check her, see if it spins a thread yet. I'm gonna hold this up and, yeah, see it's getting, it's getting closer. Yeah, see there, did you see that? See how that's hanging right in there and it'll kinda, see there, it's spinning a thread. spinning a thread. So we're pretty close. I'm gonna let it go just a little bit more here because I always gauge this by the color of these white ones and they are starting to turn. So we're just about there, you guys. It's not gonna be too much longer. I wanted you to see this whole process because it makes it easier for you to have good success if you see the whole process. So that's why I wanted to do it like this today. I know this is going to be a little bit longer video than you normally watch and you have to listen to me talk but um, at least you'll know how to make the peanut brittle so it's all good all right okay I'm liking what this is looking like here yeah they're they're turning it's looking pretty good I'm gonna check my thread here again so we'll go ahead and we'll see how fast this makes the thread this time. Mm-hmm. 
Mm, yeah. And see if you go like that and it stays on there, that's what's called spinning a thread. So that's good. All right. Okay. Those have turned. They are turning and I think for the sake of time here, yeah. See the white ones now? How they've kind of turned just a little bit of an amber color. And that's what you want. And we are spinning a thread to you. So we're good to go there. So what we're gonna do next, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. Okay, we got our pans buttered. And now we're gonna add our baking soda. And this was three and a half teaspoons. And this is just gonna foam up. Just get it all mixed up, just like that. Okay. And then you just take this and you just split it between your two pans. And you just pour it out just like that. All right. Now, let's see if I can move this a little bit, Dave, so you can see. Now we're gonna let this cool just a tiny bit because what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull it out. And I just wanna check there and see what it is. So I'm gonna put just a little bit of butter here on the, I'll use this spatula. Put a little butter here in our spatula. And then what you do is you just kind of pull it out. You just take your spatula and you stretch it out. Just like that. Okay. Put a little butter on your, your spatula there. And you just pull it out. So you're just thinning, making your brittle a little thinner is what you're doing. And don't let this get too cold on you or you won't be able to pull it. So just pretty quickly as you get it in the pan, you want to kind of pull it out. So there we have it. I can tell this is a really good batch. And then what you would do is you let this cool here for just a few minutes. I don't know if we have enough time here. We'll see if we can do that. And then, well, we might be able to. So you just let it cool a little bit. And then you just flip. I'm gonna actually split this one up here because it's a little thin right here. And then you just flip it over is what you do. And then that way your brittle doesn't stick, won't stick to your pan at all if you flip that now. So I'm going to take this right here and flip this piece. Now you'd want to let this cool just a tad more, but flip it over like that. Once it's cool enough, you can kind of handle it there and then just let it finish cooling. And then you just let it cool. And then when that cools, let's see how this one is, yeah. We're just not gonna be able to flip that yet, but probably just a couple minutes, like three or four minutes, let that cool enough, and you can take that whole piece and totally flip it over. And then when this uh, gets cool, all you do is you just crack it up. You just crack it up so it looks like this. And you just crack it up into your pieces. And then we already talked about storage. So peanut brittle is not hard. You've learned a few new little tips today. So give it a try and let me know how you like Mrs. Green's peanut brittle.